Uh, greetings there, travelers. It's been a minute. How have you been? Oh, you know how I've been. I've been better. Just kind of camping right now. Me and Michael have been thinking about uh, how to take back the inn. You see, the inn's very important. Without the inn, it's hard to remember the story. I try to write it down, but the words keep getting erased, and I don't know why. Um, we'll get the inn back, though, travelers. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll think of something. Michael's just sleeping right now. So, a lot of crazy stuff happened where we last left off. Dorum really rained hell down on New Dawn. Astoria tried to fight against her, but she was not successful. Well, uh... It does get better, travelers. It does get better. You know, it's one of the crazy things about being out here in the middle of the woods outside Sanctuary. Apparently, Battle Bard still delivers interns to you. I'm not sure how they found us. Very concerning, which means that a cult might be able to find us. But, uh, anyways, this is Trent, the end. I... I am Trent. Thank you for using Battle Bard's sound effects. You could find more sound effects like these at BattleBards.com. We have cities and dungeons galore. Okay, thanks Trent. Oh my god, you should have seen when I had to sign the contract with this guy, it took forever. Okay, um, yeah, so... What we're going to be doing for the first uh, part of this new chapter is we're going to be looking into each of the characters. For you see, they all didn't get hit the same in that blast. Some of them took more damage than others. And some of them took longer to get up. But the first to get up was the luckiest one. I think we all know who that was. So let's join Ronnie as we join him in Ronnie. Finding oneself. I am Evan, and I am playing Ronnie, the half elf bard and chosen of chaos. We find ourselves floating through a haze, and through this haze, we can hear the cheers of a crowd. They're all screaming and cheering in this darkened area. It looks like a concert had just finished up, and the door closes behind, somewhat cutting off all this screaming and cheering. And Ronnie, you are walking backstage to go meet up with your manager and the band, Ronnie and the Betrothed. Things have been going uh, far better than you ever thought they would have. You have a record deal coming up. Your music has actually been really improving. You're getting really good at writing songs. And that's one of the things you always sort of pride yourself is like, you could just sit down and write a song. You know, you've been trying to keep yourself a little more in the straight and narrow. And this is, uh, it's, it's just been making everything work. You head back past the rack of costumes that you have set up for yourself because you always love to change costumes after each song. 
which slows down the concert, but the fans seem to really dig it. They always want to see what's the next weird thing you're going to wear. Uh, what's your current outfit? Uh, daffodil. Like, you look like a giant daffodil? Yeah. Love it. <laughs> All right, so you're walking back. You still have your flower head on, and you're knocking into things. Your leaf arms knock over someone's coffee, and they're swearing. You <laughs> find the door to your band room, and you have to kind of go sideways because you're still in this daffodil costume. Uh-huh. I've been hopping. It's a single, it's a stem. It's oh. It's one so- leg. Yeah. Oh, so it's been really difficult to get around. You, it's been tough. You're getting yeah. a sweat going, but, you know, it's yeah. it's worth it. You've been working on your cardio lately to help out with these really weird costumes, and uh, it's paying off. Yeah, I just can't wait to plant myself on that couch. Oh, yeah. You get in there, and you see your three band members. Jazzy Carl, the guitarist gnome. Jazzy Jeff, the bass gnome. And Jazzy Dan the gnome drummer and they're all in their daffodil costumes just taking off the head trying to get out of them really they're having a really hard time with this (laughs) because you insisted that there be uh like uh, no seams they had to like slide it over their head Uh you look over and your manager dramaticor the beholder is floating behind his desk and has a few burnt marks on it you see to the pile of him, there's a pile of ashes, probably another intern who messed up his coffee. You don't know how Dramatic Horde doesn't get arrested, but he sure doesn't, and he gets you gigs, which is important. But one thing that catches your attention is there is a dwarf sitting on your spot of the couch. It was, uh, I don't think we'll have fans back here. I think you gotta, I think you gotta get out of here, dwarf guy. Oh, no, I was, I was told to come back here. Hi, uh, I'm Ronald, dwarf. Uh, okay, um, were you bringing me coffee? I, I don't actually drink coffee, so, uh, if you're here with the coffee, I think you need to leave. Ronald! The beholder starts looming above his desk, knocking over another lamp. We have summoned you to the band meeting room for good reason. You are no longer with Ronnie and the Betrothed. No, I don't think that Ronald guy was ever with with Ronnie and the Betrothed. Ronald is staying. Ronnie is going. And you see, one of the gnomes finally gets his costume off of his head, tosses the daffodil on the ground. He's sweating. He's just in, like, boxers. He looks up at you. It's Jazzy Jeff, the bass player. (laughs) Ronnie, listen... We've had problems with the band. Like, all right, the way you rock those keys is great. And yet you come up with some pretty good songs. Like, I Am Ronnie is charting right now. But, listen, we we just need to try to keep a uniform band look. And all these costume changes, and we just really feel like the focus of the band is all on you and it's not shared equally so we really need to we're taking things in a different direction okay but I mean the reason I came up with the costumes for you guys too was so that you would look more like me and it would be more uniform now granted they are in black and white uh, and only mine are in color but that is uh, you know my name's at the front of the band so I need to be more colorful that's just it why is your name at the front of the band? Why isn't it Jazzy Jeff and the Betrothed? Well, when I came in and it was Jazzy Jeff, Jazzy Jeff, Jazzy Jeff, and the Betrothed, uh, you know, that just wasn't a very good name. Uh, so, you know, I got rid of that and just made it Ronnie. Way snappier, I think. Uh, you can probably even ask that other Ronald. Ronnie, better name, right? You know, motion over to him doing real big head nods. Yeah, I mean, like that's what my friends call me, like, uh, for sure. They just call me Ronnie sometimes instead of Ronald, so I get it for that. But, yeah, no, like, I I can rock a pretty mean guitar, and uh, I really think I got a lot to bring to the band. Yeah. Okay, so, like, backing chords for my for my actual sweet licks. I, I you know, you know, dramatic chord, maybe this wasn't such a bad idea. Um, if we just want to replace this, this Jazzy Jeff guy with this Ronnie... 
this other Ronnie. We can't call you Ronnie. I'm already Ronnie. Um, I think you'll be Kyle. You'll be Jazzy Kyle. <laughs> oh, man. No, Ronald. You. Wait. Damn. I'm getting names confused. <laughs> you are now known as Kyle. <laughs> now. <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> but my name's not Kyle. And this beam shoots out and burns a hole right near his head. Your name is Kyle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ronnie. We have decided upon this through a game of X's and O's. I kept putting in the squares, and I lost. <laughs> so, that is why you need to leave. It was only fair. Oh, man. Oh, this can't be happening. Um, you know the fad okay. of where we solve all major decisions <laughs> through X's and O's has just been really taking off. I mean, the uh, whole thing about changing all the laws of if you could murder someone through X's and O's <laughs> was just groundbreaking. Well, and I gotta say, it did great things for my divorce. Uh, you know, I'm so glad I gotta keep my apartment. Because I took center <laughs> square. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Did Ronnie just say he murdered his wife? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just that he settled his divorce problems through X's and O's. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, I'll play dramatic. I did not know that you murdered your wife. Good for you, Ronnie. I <laughs> ate my husband. <laughs> and my children. That's, uh... Raw? Yes. How did you kill your betrothed? No, no. Uh, my, my betrothed, they're, they're still here. Uh, I'm probably going to kill him soon. But, ah, uh, yes. Tis only fair. But Ronnie, you are removed from the band. Now we are known as Kyle and the Betrothed. But if he's gone, can I just be Ronald? You are Kyle. And all this is hitting you. Isn't this Ronnie's dream? To have the band and all that named after him? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, uh... Oh, man. Uh, maybe, uh... Can I at least keep the costumes? Yes, you may. <laughs> they are all outside, all 150 of them. <laughs> oh, that's good. I was going to eat them, but you can have them instead. Okay, well. Hey, I brought someone soy latte, uh, no fat, no dairy, whipped cream with dairy. <laughs> no! <laughs> and then he just gets vaporized right beside you. I wanted caramel. And the, the soy latte just falls in the ground. Spills. It falls in the ground. Well, I could have drank that. I apologize. I do not like to waste things. As you feel this weight of everything, everything's just going wrong. You Before you were hopping into the band room, everything was going great. You were at the prime of your life. This was, this was it. And now, standing there in your daffodil costume... Looking at this dwarf who is replacing you, this Kyle taking over, it's not fair. And you are getting angrier and you're trying to move in your daffodil costume and you feel like you're starting to tip over. And as you fall back and you're just about to hit the ground, you spring up in your bed. And you're looking around. You're sore. It's morning. You hear birds. Your head hurts. But it's not a hangover. It's like your head actually hurts from being hit by something. You have a lot of bandages on you. It's like some pink blotches of skin, like new skin's been formed. You look over and you see Kelsar in his bed in a full body cast. You see MZ is wrapped up. Both of his arms are in casts. You see Bordon, one of his legs is in a cast, and he's wrapped up pretty good. And you look over to your left, there is Quintos, the man who could duplicate himself, and there are four versions of him performing a tap dance. And he's just standing there watching, going, Yes, stay on point, stay on point. Wake up, I suddenly look around, and I see all these people in casts. I'm just 
suddenly hit with all these memories of when me and my band were all on casts. Was that a costume choice? Yeah, singing our sweet new hit. You made me so sad, I'm calling for my mummy. (laughs) (laughs) And it was a big Halloween hit, too. (laughs) Big Halloween hit, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people loved it. Mummy sales, like the costumes, they were really up that year. And the city's choice to have four Halloweens that year really helped with sales. It was a good choice. Yeah. I'm glad I paid off all those people to make that call. Yeah. It was another world and you had a lot of money. (laughs) Right. Well, I had all this money for tic-tac-toe boards. You know, it was all kind of overlapping. Were you one of the reasons that tic-tac-toe got real big? (laughs) Uh, No, I just took advantage of it. Okay, nice. So, uh, Quintos looks over. He stares at you like a deer caught in the headlights. The other ones, they're all tapping still, but they're all looking at you with the same wide eyes. So you're awake now, Ronnie? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I seem to be awake. Be more awake. It's been two days. Oh, well, at least I didn't break my record. Well, New Dawn is gone. It's destroyed. It blew up. A story is in a coma. Doomsayer's dead. Sven's dead. Bunch of people are dead. I almost died. Yeah, I I remember I remember a chunk of that. Uh, uh, not sure what you want me to tell you. It it blew up real good. I was there real close. It blew up real good. I I think it was um because MZ stabbed Dorum with a sword. Um. Yeah, that would probably do it. You know, at this point, I regret my choice not to have just run away. Uh, Normally that works. It probably would work there again, too. It worked for a lot of us. A lot of us ran. And he looks over at one of his clones and says, I said stay on point! And he shoves his fist through its head and just absorbs it. And the other three start tapping faster. (laughs) He looks back at you. Yeah... Yeah, running was a good option. I left a bunch of me's back there to die so that I could run. I think I'm the real one. I am the real one. I I am Quintos, yes. Anyways, there's food outside if you want some in the main hall. They're all just studying and reading books, and I thought, that sucks. I'm going to work on tap dancing. Uh, yeah, that's probably the call I would have made, too. Okay, um, I'm going to try and stand up. Am I, am I legs covered in bandages or just my head? Uh, just your head, you got some bandages, you got, like, some on your arms and stuff, like, it looks like you're just in, like, uh, just, like, your underclothes from your armor. Okay. And there's some clean clothes that are at the foot of your bed, you see your gear has been fixed up and it's sitting off to the side, your gold suit has been mended. Okay, uh, can one of your guys here help me throw this stuff on? My arms are kinda, kinda not moving right. Sure, no problem, one second. He stands and faces you and just starts screaming as another version of him rips from the front of him. Ah! And then they walk over and he turns back to the tap dancers. And this other version's like, hi. Um, that was real weird. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But I've only been alive for about five seconds, so what do I know? Here, let's get these pants on. Yeah, let's uh, stretch my legs out. Pants on. Yeah, they do like those like things where he's helping you like stretch your legs. You don't need it, but you let him do it anyways. <laughs> and he's like helping you stretch, and then you get all clothed. They try to get your armor underneath your suit like you had it before, and it's all fitting really nicely. All right. I guess I'm gonna be annihilated. Bye. And just like once again, Quintos grabs onto his clone, screams, and rips them back into himself. Huh. I wonder if my clones are like that. Maybe. This is my power uh, from the symbol. I don't want to let my clones get too confident. And he looks mm. over at the other three who start tapping faster. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll try later. I'm gonna scurry away. Careful, clones try to kill you all the time. Well, so does everyone else. Fair. Differences make. So you walk out into the hallway and down to the main room. 
where normally there's all those bookcases and the tables and the fireplaces. And you see it's been rearranged a little bit. There's more tables that were moved in. You see the large fish hooks that, like, when these massive creatures melted down and there was just a fish hook left, they have these on the table. They're looking over them. There's books piled everywhere. There's kind of like a buffet table set up where there's just a bunch of food. People are just moving up, grabbing food, and going back to the tables of books and looking at these fish hooks. Um, well, I'm going to grab a bit of food and then uh, take, it, take it on the go, I think. Okay. So you grab some food and uh, you just take an actual plate with you. Yeah. Because it's not like they have paper plates. Actual plate, actual fork. And so you take this and uh, you head her on out. That nice fall breeze kind of hits you as you come outside. and It's nice to stretch your legs, get some fresh air. It doesn't smell musty in there with all those people healing. Ugh, well, it was a good nap. Um, I guess I don't know what to do anymore. I'm kind of free, I guess. I'll probably run away while these guys are all bandaged up. Hmm. Uh, what city am I even in? You're in Sanctuary. In Sanctuary? Yeah, so you're just outside the headquarters. It's like this uh, temple district. A lot of different priests and everything are moving. Some people look at you and they quickly hurry on. Uh, the one thing you do notice is that there's no cultists around right now. Hmm. Maybe someone knows a good way to find some of these other Ronnies. If I could get one of those other Ronnies before these guys wake up trade places and then I'd be free we all do a little scan here all right and I want to use uh, locate creature locate creature does not actually go very far I think it's a thousand feet uh, so are there any Ronnie's within a thousand feet how does this spell activate you just like kind of hit like a triangle or like a gong or something and just like reverberates out Maybe what, maybe what I'm doing is I'm uh, just sh- hitting a tambourine and like spinning in a circle. Okay, love it. Yeah, it's like you got yeah. that Final Fantasy X unidance going on, <laughs> right? You know? Yeah, letting the souls move on. Yeah. So you're there, you're dancing in the middle of the street. Carriages have to go around you. You start concentrating, trying to see if you can locate one of these Ronnies, and you start walking along because the spell goes up to an hour, so you can just kind of keep it going. Mm-hmm. And you feel, you know it's not another you, but it's almost like a residue signature. Mm. Which way, or can I tell which, which direction? You feel it's like coming from the market. Okay. Thousand, yeah, a thousand feet is not that far, huh? Yeah, you're basically like walking around town and just okay. sort of like banging on this tambourine. Something over there. Mm. Well, I better investigate. Yes, I'm already walking. I'm probably pretty close to there. Yeah, you're not too far. Like a thousand feet, probably. Uh, I don't know how far a thousand feet is. Uh, so your standard city block is 900 feet. 900 feet? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so would he even be even to, able to detect that? I guess if you're walking around. Yeah, like you're you're not too... Like you're probably like uh, on the street adjacent to where like this open market is. Yeah. Okay. So I could go look around there. Looking for some Ronnies. Something that smells like a Ronnie. You go there and you see there's this man. He He's not too tall. He's about five feet tall. He has this shaggy brown hair. He has these red robes on, like the cult that you've been encountering constantly. He has the necklace of the shining uh, the shining god around his neck. But he looks nervous and scared, and you feel that residue coming from him. He turns towards you, and you see he has goat legs. All right. And he looks wide-eyed and just happy to see you. Um, that doesn't look like me. So, okay. Well, he's already looking at me. He's coming this way. Oh, my God, Ronnie, is that you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's me. I have been waiting here forever for you. What's been taking you? Uh, have have we met? Yes! We just talked this morning. Nope, this morning I was, uh... Wait, is it not the morning? It's just, I guess, like, he meets earlier this morning. So. Okay. 
No, I uh, I just woke up and I don't sleepwalk. I'm pretty sure I don't sleepwalk. How do you know? Anyways, that's not important. <laughs> you said you were gonna help me out. The ringleader is after me. I gotta get somewhere safe. These cultists are trying to find me. I can't stay undercover anymore. They know. I haven't actually seen that many cultists around here. Yeah, a bunch uh. of them went into hiding and they sent one of their goons after me because they found out I wasn't really on the up and up. I was giving the guards information. Like, you know how we said we would do. Sure that was me? Yes! There's a lot of Ronnies. There's a lot of them. Well, I mean, you weren't wearing this whole fancy get-up glam-glam. Ah, couldn't have been me. Well, oh, it looked just like, it sounded like you too. Even a few of the same mannerisms. Hmm. Wore a, a white, a white coat though, not, not this fancy gold. Not as much spray tan now that I'm looking at it. His hair was different, it was combed over. Oh, is this your twin? Uh, maybe something like that. But, uh, yeah, no, that, yeah, definitely wasn't me. Uh, so, where did you see this other guy? I just met him down near the Vulgar Unicorn. We always met down there. Listen, I got the payment. I got all the money. I got the item you requested. All you gotta do is get me out of here. I don't know if you have, like, you and your twin have, like, a ship set up for me or something. Whatever you need to do, I need to get the hell out of here so the ringleader does not find me, because that's bad news bears. All right. Um, yeah, maybe I can help you out. So you said you got a thing for me? Do you want to give, th- give me the thing? Hey, I was born yesterday there, Mr. Ronnie O'Connell. I'm going to hold on to this here book, and I'll give you that book after. Now, this magic is potent. I'm not just going to give away a special magic item like this to anyone. You gotta get me out of here. Mm-hmm. 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 You see, pushing through the crowd, there is a tall, lanky person. They look odd. They are wearing the same red color outfit as um, this guy in front of you, but it's more like, kind of like a suit. Like, it, it, he looks like a ringmaster from a circus. Okay. Uh, invisibility on that guy. Just a little touch of invisibility. The guy beside you? Yeah. So you just tap him on the shoulder and he's like, oh! And he just like pops out. Yep. Oh, well this is fancy. Yeah, uh, so we got an hour. So, uh... Ooh. I kind of want to get out of here too. We should go get a Danish. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry. Uh, I'm still carrying my plate, I assume. <laughs> yeah, you still like you're just kind of finishing it up. <laughs> I'm gonna hand him, hand him something off my plate. <laughs> oh, thank you. Like there's like yeah. a little piece of cauliflower like floats up and just slowly starts disappearing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see if the creature notices. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the creature, it looks and it saw the cauliflower disappear and it just looks confused. People are giving this thing a wide berth. It looks like it's like eight or nine feet tall and a ridiculous hat on it. It's getup is kind of impressive. You're like, oh, that looks actually kind of nice. I could wear that for one of my songs. (laughs) But, and like already like a song is formulating in your head. Uh Uh-huh. But this creature, it like starts lurching towards you. Its hands are long. Its arms are long. Like its hands are basically dragging on the ground. Oh, that was good. Well, we should run. Oh, we should yeah, run. Let's run. We should run. <laughs> and I want to just book it. I think what we should do is run to the vulgar unicorn. That sounds like a real smart idea. Let's go. Oh, this is such a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you start running towards the vulgar unicorn, and you've been there enough times. You know how to get there, especially from the market. Mm-hmm. You are running through the crowds. You're, like, pushing past people. Naturally, there's a person with a cart of melons that you just... You shove the cart over. It wasn't in your way. <laughs> I want to go back and pick up a melon and then just smash it on the ground. <laughs> yeah, you do. And the creature is now even closer because you did this. And <laughs> it, like, stomps on melons. People are starting to really get the fuck out of your way. You hear in the distance a guard's whistle being blown. 
and you look and the vulgar unicorn is like a block away and you're just quickly hoofing it. Do we go inside or what's going on? I bet he can't fit through a door. You know what? I didn't even think about that part. I figured we'd just find the other Ronnie and he could tell us what the fuck we're supposed to be doing. Um, well, let's run inside. Who do we see? What do we see inside? You burst inside, and there's a lot of cultists in here. <laughs> they're all like, they have drinks, and they're all talking, and they're smiling. You see the woman behind the counter. She's wearing a necklace, and she has clothing that's the same red color. You remember meeting her before, and she never had any of this get up. She mm-hmm. looks at you, and you see there are no eyes in that head of hers, and she just smiles. Welcome, Ronnie. What do we owe the pleasure? Uh, I'm looking for a different Ronnie. Is there another Ronnie here? There's another Ronnie. Interesting. Um, no, would you like us to help you find him? It's better if there are more people looking into this. Uh. Oh, she's not wrong. You know what? She's not wrong. And normally people like that are really helpful. Uh, but, uh, we don't really have time to go looking for the other Ronnie if he's not already here. So... Maybe what we'll do instead... Hmm, guy's already over there. Is there another exit out of the Vulgar Unicorn? Yeah, there's a back. You now hear the doorknob is turning. The front door. Uh, run through the crowd. Uh, while we're running through the crowd, I'm also grabbing one of those red robes, throwing it over me. If I can... Want me to make a little thing for that? Yeah, make me a sleight of hand. Alright, I got an 18. So you go and you grab one of these robes as they're ripping past. They don't even seem to notice because they're all turning towards as this massive creature is trying to get through the door. And you hear a few of them go, Hello, Ringmaster. Welcome. As this thing is just breaking through the doorway, you hear the wood snapping as you make it to the back door. Okay. Uh, uh, So we're running through... It's like a back alley that you bust into. There's garbage cans and uh, just like... There's troughs for all the dirty water and waste that people would pour out in the back. Mm. Is there a well nearby? You could probably find one pretty quick. They usually have them. I want to try and find a well. Okay. I'll let you do a perception. A nine. You are looking around trying to find a well. And if somebody had a bird's eye view, they would see Ronnie perfectly turning at each turn where there is a well and going the opposite way. Oh, no. And so you are just like running through these streets. You can't find anything. And you hear this thing now coming up behind you. You can now hear the familiar sound of ghouls. This creature is just like screaming and gnashing their teeth and making strange hissing noises. And Wilbur is, you can kind of see him because you're the one who cast the spell. Oh my goodness. Oh, is that what his name is? Yeah. Oh, sorry. (laughs) By the way, my name's Wilbur Watley. I just thought I'd let you know, because in case you need to be like, Hey, Wilbur, what are you doing? Okay, I probably will forget that immediately. Perfect. And then uh, next time someone brings you up, I'll say, who was that? Oh, that's but, good. Yeah. Good alibi. Yeah. Man, I am running out of breath. How are you so fit? Uh, I run away from people a lot. <laughs> that's good. That's good cardio. You have this cloak on now, and some people are looking over at you just in disgust, like, oh, it's another one of those fucking cultists. You know you're not too far away from the docks. There's a nobles district that's not too far away. You know there is a river that goes through the middle of the city, and on the other side, it's, like, residential. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll head for the docks. All right. So make me an athletics check. 17. All right, you are running good. You look behind you just to see what's going on. You see that creature is going, and a bunch of the guards stop in front of it, going like, Halt! You can't go past here! What are you? State your business! And they all have swords drawn, and they're pointing at the creatures. The creature's now looking down at them, and you quickly turn a corner, and you think you've bought some time. So I'm running to the docks. When I get to the docks, what do I... Do I see any kind of small boats? I'm looking for, like, a, something I can commandeer. So you run to the docks and you see there are, you know, of course, all the massive ships that are doing the hauling off cargo, putting cargo on. Some of them are starting to leave. You see there are just crowds of people going to the fish market that they have there. Mm-hmm. A lot of warehouses everywhere. And you do see a few small fishing boats that are tied up. There's a, a few small sailing boats. And there's uh, some people that are like on the docks fishing from them. 
Okay. I want to run up to one of the fishing boats. Preferably one with no one on it. Yep, there's one. Running up to that. You get to this fishing boat, and you look like it's just been tied to the dock. And Mm -hmm. you see there's no one on there. There's everything as far as boats go. They seem to make sense. You're like, okay, boat stuff's here. All right, I'm going to try and operate this boat. (laughs) So you hop onto this boat and start untying it. And Wilbur is on there with you. He's trying to help you out, like trying to move things around. He doesn't know what he's really doing. One weird thing that happens is while you're operating this boat and like looking around, you know exactly what to do. You know how to operate this boat. You know everything about this sailing boat. You have this memory really quickly of fishing in the middle. Like there was a storm and you were trying to operate your boat. You had other crewmen that you were trying to get back. You looked older in a reflection of this glass as you're making this boat move, but it kind of snaps back out and you're back on this boat. You know you're proficient now with sailing small crafts. Ooh, that's useful. And you're pretty sure what you just saw was another Ronnie's life. Mm. Mm. Okay. So that ties into your jack of all trades. So if you run into something that you're just not proficient with, like a weapon you've never used or something crazy like siege equipment or anything like that, you can try to roll your powers to try to become proficient in it. If you make just like an okay check, you're temporarily proficient with it. And if you like get like a 20 or above, then you can become proficient in something because you're learning from all the other Ronnies. That's really fucking clever, Lucas. <laughs> I've been fucking sitting on this. That's a real. That's a real. That's a really. That's a really good one. Okay, so I try and uh, boat this guy away. Uh, I don't know what is on the other side of this lake. Uh, it's not a lake. It's the ocean. <laughs> so because this is a. Oh right, coastal. Okay. So you see, out in the distance, there is a small island with a large tower on it. You see further out, there seems to be some other islands. It looks like it's a naval base. Mm. You don't know much else. You see there are maps on here, uh, some navigational tools, anything you need to kind of figure out. Uh, Maybe I'll just ask. So uh, do you have have a place you would want to go? Honestly, if you could just get me, like, up the coast, I could probably make my way. Okay. You could try for that. Uh... So I'm gonna sail north. Is this west east, west east, or north south? Uh, so the coast is north south. Uh, north seems good. We'll go north a while. All right, sounds good. Roll me a check to use this boat, so you'll add your wisdom modifier and your proficiency bonus. Sixteen. So you are operating this craft, no problem. So this is one of your permanent ones because it's like your abilities first unlocking mm-hmm. you are going through the motions you know how to read this map you can't read the words on the map but right. you have the general <laughs> gist of it right you're like I know this one of these Ronnie's should have been able to read oh well you could try to learn if you want to try to learn to read I think it's way funnier that none of the Ronnie's can read <laughs> it's just like a an actual condition that they have <laughs> yeah. like they're I, I don't know what the is like dyslexic but even then they could still read they just have a harder time with it yeah but yeah no you just have a one hell of a time reading so you can read your name there's that that's true and I think we also made it canon that Ronnie can read arcane text but it has to actually be magical text not just someone writing something down in the spell book oh okay yeah because we had him read something magic one time I think okay that makes sense oh right it was a scroll that makes sense that he yeah it's not not actually reading yeah it's like he's just reading the magic so you are sailing along this coast and every so often you see these fish heads bob up and bob down but the thing that's weird about them is they're quite large you see like these two dead fish eyes looking up wilbur becomes visible because the spell runs out he looks over the side of the boat and goes oh shoot um we got 
some deep ones following us. Hmm. Um. I think I got a spell that can make this boat go faster. <laughs> it might yeah. not work, though. Uh huh. Well, um. Maybe before you do that, maybe I'll just, just, just try this. And I want to stick my hand into the water and use Thunder Wave. Nice. All right. Uh, do you cast it as a higher level spell or is it just first level spell? This will be. Yeah, I'll, I might as well cast it as higher level. I can't imagine I'll use anything. I'll yeah. cast it at uh, level three. All right. They both fail. What damage do they take? 42. Oh, wow. So know, right? this blast just goes out. Fish just float to the top as electricity is going through. You really supercharged the spell, probably more than you ever have before. You can tell that your power is really gaining. You've never cast magic like this. And you see two large humanoid fish-like bodies just float to the top, and they're just face down. Oh, shoot, look at you, Mr. Magic Man. It worked. It actually worked for once. Wow. Wow, you're really good. Thank you. Are you like a famous adventurer? Uh, yes. But don't go tell anyone. Um, unless they want to buy advertising space. That's fair. You want to keep expectations low and then you'll just surprise them on the way. Exactly. Oh, wow. You're a smart businessman. I tried to make this guy like little Gideon, except more useless. <laughs> All right, well, that's cool. Yeah, this is nice sailing. So, what have you been up to anyways, Ronnie? Last I talked to you, or I guess your twin, you were trying to look for something to stop that there Dorum lady, and uh, I was giving you info. Uh, yeah, that one, uh, that plan did not work. Uh, from what that twin was telling me. Uh, well, he was saying a bunch of you were dying. You are all getting killed off. Yeah, that probably happened, too. Um, right now, I'm just trying to find a different Ronnie who maybe wants to take up the lead uh, and be the lead Ronnie so I can get back to some important business. You think they're just going to, like, let you chill after all this? Uh, yeah, prob- probably. They probably will. Uh, they're, they're pretty cool. Uh, I think they'll I think they'll be okay with me with me just taking a breather here. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I I got into this whole thing. I was, I'm actually a priest of the uh, Chantia, the the nature goddess and uh, goddess of, like the harvest. But then your twin came up uh, probably about a month ago and said, "Hey, I need your help. I need to get information on Dorm." And I just knew in my heart I gotta help this poor soul. And so. He was Mr. Science Book Smarts, and I myself am of the faith. And so I was like, I'll help you, and I can I can get into a faith just like that. You know, I just snuck right in. <laughs> now, they didn't suspect a thing, but then it came time to do all that oogly-googly human sacrifice, and I wasn't so keen, and uh, that's when they knew I wasn't really all in. You know, uh... I guess I agree with your values. I probably would have just gone with the human sacrifice. Um, I just thought it was so icky. And the people weren't really into the sacrifice, you know? Like, if someone's like, oh, I want to do this, it looks like fun, then maybe. But, like, he was not there for that. Yeah, you know, I say this. Probably what I actually would have done was turned invisible and ran away. Yeah. So maybe you should look into invisibility. I might buy some scrolls, I think. There's another church of mine. It's just up near Waterdeep, so I'm probably going to go there. And uh, There's a lot of small farming communities around Waterdeep, so I'm sure they're all fine, and I could just go stay there. Okay. You, you 100%. Kind of... Do you remember about Waterdeep and its communities around it? Uh, that's where the Steve was, wasn't it? That's where you sent the caravans. Uh, oh, that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... Maybe Waterdeep's okay. Oh, it's it's a pretty powerful city. I'm sure it's good. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, uh... Where... What, what was Steve's town called? Steve was from Geldspar. Geldspar. How far is Geldspar from here? Uh, from Sanctuary, it was about a week's travel. Uh, and then Geldspar got destroyed. 
But I thought there were still farms and stuff there. I thought it was just, like, the inn that got destroyed. Uh, it was, like, the town that they had built up around it. Like, yeah, there is, like, farms in the area that would be fine. But, like, the oh, okay. little town that was built up there is gone. Oh. Man, we really turned into, like, real murder hobos in a lot of this, huh? It was more like you guys were trying to do the right thing, and <laughs> you would just bring the destruction to you, and as a result, the collateral damage would just kill everyone. Mm. But you were legitimately trying to save people instead of just going into towns killing people. It's true. Well, uh, may, you know, maybe Waterdeep's not such a great idea. Uh, there are some farms around Geldspar, and there is one that should be empty. Oh, that sounds nice. I could do a farm. Okay. I mean, I worship the nature goddess of harvest. Come on. I'm going to take him to... I'm going to try and sail up a bit farther. I don't know if I can actually sail towards Geldspar or not, but... No, it's more inland, but you could at least get him to, like, a major road so that he could... Yeah, I'll do that. So you sail on for a bit. It, You guys probably sail for, like, three or four hours. And you finally get up far enough where, like, this should be good. No one can just, like, quickly run from Sanctuary to here. Okay. You get to a safe place with the boat, and you're able to tie it up all right. There's, like, little docks every now and then. It looks like people probably come out here to, uh, like, every so often to, like, stop and maybe unload onto a wagon or something in the area. Uh, so you stop at one of these, and then you see, like, there's a, a couple little huts that people are just sitting at and chilling about near the area, and a few little houses that are a little closer to the shore. Well, this should do. I could probably find some rooms here, and uh, then I'll make my way off to that farm. Are you sure the owner of the farm won't be mad? No. He still owes me work. Oh. I think if you just tell him that one of the Ronnies, that the Ronnie, said that, uh, you know, uh, I sent you and, uh, you're, you're, you're gonna go and either work for him or he'll work for you. I, I don't know. You can figure that part out. I'm sure we could work something out. We could help him out. He can help me. Okay, and then you can both pay me tithes. Oh, wow. Are, are you honestly... Um, are you charging me right now for protection? I was about to pay I, you right now for uh, getting me out. Oh, okay. Well, as long as you didn't forget. Oh, no, I got it right here. So he hands you a sack of 500 gold pieces. So this is the fee for getting me out, and this is for... Just help me with those deep ones, because I bet they would have just grabbed me if I stayed here. And he hands you this book. And uh, it's like a long book, um, not too tall. And you see there's magical writing on it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, you. so you look at the, the title, and you have the Book of Friends. <laughs> okay. So what you can do with this... Come up with, like, in your own time, come up a list of 20 yokai that you can summon with this book. Uh-huh. And every time, you could use it once a day, and you roll a d20, and it'll summon oh. one of these creatures to help you. And th you can have them, like, give them personalities, like, if they actually would want to help, if they would begrudgingly help you. Okay. If they're, like, one of those sadistic monster ones or if they're like one that you know the ones that um, possess the lanterns and just fuck with people all night you know like you could just bring in whatever you want you could make up stuff but just come up with like a list of these creatures and then you could use it once a day to summon these creatures to help you out sweet okay. and it's because Ronnie always wants friends <laughs> always now want he, has, friends. he has a book of <laughs> magically obligated friends uh-huh, that's the best kind. <laughs> yeah. So I think you could have some fun with that, making up some, or finding out, like, some really weird creatures to bring in. I Yeah, they'll most likely be able to do some instrument-based ones or something. Yeah. As I, I remember playing so many games with that kind of stuff, and then there's even the anime, like Natsume Yujin Show, and I think, uh, I think this could be some fun shit that Ronnie would bring in. Yep. Sweet. So you see off Wilbur, and uh, he walks away, the satyr man. You are sitting in this boat, and it's no one around. I mean, there's a few fishermen here, but you're kind of free 
to relax for a bit. What would Ronnie do with the remainder of his time before the rest of his party starts coming to? Would he just keep trying to look for a Ronnie? I need to find another Ronnie. So I need to find somewhere. I, I need to start looking for somewhere I can boost my, my Ronnie finder. Hmm. All right. So we can say that Ronnie spends his time. He would probably not be reading about it, but you would probably at least be asking around, right? Like trying to be like, right. hey, I need to find a place with like natural magics to boost this. Mm-hmm. Make me um, three rolls of investigation and we'll see. Okay. How well you got this? Got a seven. I got another seven. Oh my God. And I got a five. <laughs> wow. True <laughs> Ronnie fashion. You can't figure out any specific points, but you hear a few old people at a bar, one of the bars that you end up like playing at during one of the nights, and they tell you, oh yeah, there's a lot of natural magics up to the north. That's where there's a lot of those giant ancient trees of life, uh, a lot of those ancient old elven settlements. Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff to the north, but there's a lot of orcs up there, and uh, well, there's a lot of dwarven settlements and stuff. I'm sure you could, you could probably get an airship out there if you really wanted to. Okay, yeah, yeah, I could probably find an airship. Yeah, I can't imagine it's, it's too difficult. You just need the money. I, you know, sometimes you do. <laughs> You have, like, played around places, mainly you'd expect to get paid, but always your drink tab is so big that you kind of, like, blues brother it, and you have Mm -hmm. to run (laughs) because you drank more than what they were going to pay you. Right. And uh, so you spent most of your time doing this, trying to research places of ancient magics. Does Ronnie have knowledge arcana as a skill? No. All right, we could say, because you spent so long, you're the one with the most time out of everyone. Right. Uh, Because you're the first to wake up. And we'll say you had enough time that, like, every now and then you'd kind of go check on the guys. Maybe, like, feel a little guilty, see them, they're still all bandaged up. Slowly, one by one, they're waking up. But you uh, spent a lot of this time just learning about the magic of this world from all the people who are living in it. Okay. And we'll say that you have Arcana as a skill proficiency. Sure. Right under base loot, which I still have not used. <laughs> well, I think it's an actual skill. Is it uh like uh like athletics and all that. It's under intelligence. Oh, it is under Okay. I thought it was like a proficiency like light armor or something. Oh no, but you do have uh proficiency like base loot for light watercrafts. Oh, okay. The, the guys will be so weirded out if they have to go on a boat and you're like, okay, yeah, we'll just do all this. <laughs> and you just know everything and they're like, what? Oh, what a tale that Ronnie brought to us. Hope Wilbur does okay. He was one of our special agents that was undercover. He was there for a long time. It was quite surprising how long he held out. We are all grateful for your service, Wilbur. What's actually was quite interesting in this is finally seeing Ronnie start to evolve. And correct me if I'm wrong, but... I think there was a little bit of compassion. Ronnie caring a little bit more. But we'll see how that all turns out. The next prologue we have, travelers, shall be Borodon in the Arcane Understanding. And travelers, if you wish to help out and help us gain more strength and power to retake the Inn of the Seven Dice, feel free to leave us one of them good reviews. You could do that on iTunes, Podchaser, or... You could even do it on the Stitcher. We truly appreciate it, travelers. It really makes our day when we see those. Also, feel free to hop on over to our Patreon if you want to toss a few gold coins our way. We have a lot of one-shots there that explain more little bits about the story and just look into some fun elements. 
even some cool guesting. Well, travelers, it's time for Michael to take watch, because I am tired. I'll beat you all. Adieu.